everyone. Welcome to Gurta Meetups. My name is Karina Lukianova and I'm Business Development Manager at Gurtam for the region at Riolon Division. Hello, and I am Jao Parvapaya, Regional Development Manager for the MENA region at Riolon Division. We are glad that you have joined our session today as we'll be talking about an interesting topic as Riolon Local Friend, our server-based solution. We will cover the process of installation, setting up the administration panel, the use cases for the solution. Hopefully, you will find the session useful and informative in case you are planning to work with a server-based solution. At the end of the webinar, we'll have a Q&A session joined by our VLON local expert, Sergei Lapin, where we'll be able to answer all of your questions. So please feel free to leave them in the chat below. Um, a recording of this webinar will also be available on our YouTube channel together with all of the previous sessions. So please don't forget to subscribe to stay notified about the new videos. Well, recently we have noticed an increase in demand for a server-based solution. Reasons for this are different. However, the most common ones is the governmental regulations. Some countries require a data to be stored on the premises of the country and unfortunately using a cloud-based solution Another use case could be a specific project where the end customer requires a solution to be installed on his own server for security reasons. Especially, to, uh, sorry, especially for this, we at Gurtam offer our partners a VLO local forensic solution. Indeed, working with a server solution brings a lot, a lot more responsibilities rather than a cloud version. Nevertheless, we would like to guide you through some of the points to simplify this process. Let us start with the server options. Full list of server specifications will be available via link in the description to this video. However, we would like to point out that it is always better to use a physical server rather than a virtual one. Physical server um, is far more powerful and efficient than a virtual one due to the fact that virtual machines are prone to performance issues as a result of an overflow. However, we also understand that virtual machines have their own advantages. One of the main ones is the cost. Building and maintaining a physical server environment can be quite expensive. This is due to the constant hardware and software upgrades, frequent system failures, and a breakdown of computer components and equipment, which are difficult or even impossible to repair. At the same time, virtualization is considered a perfect option for enterprise which contain a large number of servers. A virtual server environment allows you to evenly distribute computing resources among all running virtual machines, thus ensuring the capacity optimization for a minimal price. However, you should note that virtual software licenses can be quite expensive as well. Depending on the size of the virtual environment, the price can be up to a few thousand dollars. Deciding between a physical machine and a virtual machine can be difficult, but defining your business needs and goals and considering the resources available within your infrastructure can be of great help. Now, let us move on to an actual installation of Villa Local for Rent. We will, also link, we will also leave a link in the description where you can find a step-by-step -step guide. However, let us look into it closely today. Jay, would you like to take over? Sure thing. Here we have a window of VLON local for rent installation setup. We did, what we did is that we downloaded ISO installation disk image file from the link here to the USB drive and connected it to an empty server. VLON for local for rent ISO file includes Debian OS together with slightly modified installation setup. First, you mount the ISO image to the server either by a flash drive or something else and launch it. Then you see this picture with options. Here you need to select if you want to install VLON Local to a single drive or to two, four, eight drives assembled in RAID. Conclusively, if you have one hard disk, you need to select a single drive. If you want to go with two or more, you need to select appropriate options. It's important to mention that we strongly recommend to use RAIDs because it will give you additional protection for your data in case of disk corruption. There is also a custom GMOD installation uh, with custom setup. Please choose this option only if you know what you're doing and you are an experienced system administrator. For us, let's go with two drives. This option means installing VLAN local on RAID with two drives. 
we will select the option and we will press enter to begin. The difference in installation between single drive and two drive is that you will have to select multiple options of drives for installation. Here, the setup installer starts with few base installations, minor configurations, and prepares the required components for installation. It is very, very similar to Debian installation. So if you install Debian for leisure on daily basis, this process will be familiar to you. Here we can see how the installer is trying to find the network. So if you already have the network card and the network DHCP, if you have already configured network, it will be automatically configured for you. But of course, we haven't done that, so we will try to configure the network manually. So after the empty search, the installer will give you the options. Of course, you can always retry automatic network configurations. We will go with manual configurations simply because we can. Here we fill in the IP address of our server. The next step will ask for the gateway. And after dialing the IP address, the next step will ask for the gateway. Here the system will suggest the most optimal one. It's okay for us, so we press enter. Then the system will ask the names of your servers for your DNS. Here you see we mentioned two DNS servers. Since we have two, we mentioned both of them by separating them by space, since they need space, just like all of us sometimes. The next step is that you need to select and create a password for your super user with full access to your Linux OS. It's important to highlight that this is a password set up for your Linux, not VLAN or Facebook, and you create it for your own. The password will be for Linux administrator if ever needed and it's not related to VLAN. Going further, installer will proceed with detecting disks for in case if you have a single hard disk drive, it will detect it automatically and will proceed with partitioning it, then installing it. This is exactly what is happening with our installation right now. In case if you have multiple disks on your server, this is the section where you select which ones you want to use for installing VLAN load. It's important to mention here that without access to an outside world, the installation is not possible. Your server has to have access to the internet and has to have access to outside networks. This is important for the installer to download components of Debian. This, is, this part is one of the reasons why we have decided to go with the recording installation process. As this process usually takes a bit of time, so let us use, skip it further to the next step. Here I would suggest you to have some snacks in your phone with you to entertain yourself, which usually does the thing. We're almost done with installation. In our case, it took about 30 minutes. It might be a different time for you depending on your server setup as well as your internet speed. Here we can see that the installer is configuring the APTs, which are the tools essential for Debian and few other software items to complete the installation. Here we fast forward the process for another 25 minutes to the next step where the installer works on preparing the Linux, Linux bootloader. Voila, we're on the finish line where the installer completes the installation and restarts the system and we see a bootloader from Linux. Here, on the group bootloader, we choose Debian Linux OS and wait for the first ever launch of operating system that we just installed. The next window shows the console with our VLON's URL and it gives an option to type in the credentials of your login and password. Here is the screen. You do not have to do that because you already have the URL at the top, which is your access to VLON local admin panel. Now, you can, uh, you can access your admin panel from any other computer in the same network by only typing the same URL to the browser. But if you still want to see the console of your VLAN local on Linux, you can do it here. Login is always root, uh, and password is the one that you have mentioned at the beginning of installation. Here you have the stats of your VLAN local OS on your Linux console. It's not as fun, so let's go to our below, below, below uh, VLAN local and view the admin panel. 
So the next step is that we copy the URL address we have on the browser. We go to our standard login and password uh, of Vialon local admin panel. Here, you need to use the credentials that were given to you by our Gurtam relationship, but by your Gurtam relationship manager. You should receive it all in an email from us. Once we log in, the system will proceed with downloading, installing, and configuring the modules of your Vialon Local for Rent license. There, the system will download the components from our own Vialon li license server. Hence, it might take a bit of time. Let's see if it's downloading. It is. Once completed, uh, we see the window with our own Vialon Local license administration panel, which means the completion of installation. Let's give it a second. Congratulations, you have successfully finished installing VLON Local for Rent Server. We have a lot more to show you here on the admin panel, but first let us talk a bit about the implementations and benefits of server-based setup. As we mentioned at the beginning, there can be many reasons why would you like to have your local friend. Most common ones are regulations in the region and the security measures that are required by the client. The reasons we are keep highlighting on governmental regulations is that in a few of the countries we work in the Middle East, it is required to host the GPS tracking data inside the country. Luckily for our community of our partners, we have this option for a long time and we have several partners who have been successfully using the server version of VLON and have even built their audience based on their local friend. Thanks to our partner community, we learn new things and improve our expertise. Now, let's have a look at one of the use cases of server-based setup. Our partner from Ukraine introduced a solution based only on the VLON software. Our partner used VLON app, VATAC, and VLON to keep kids safe. They have installed VATAC on the child's phone and it gave VLON app access to the parents. The child would have the option of an SOS button on the mobile app for the emergency and they were monitored 24-7 by parents using the VLON app. Now, the solution was VLON-based, and since it was a governmental project, the partners simply used the VLON local option to host the data inside the country. It was as simple as that. Very frequent question here is if there is any setback on using VLON local for rent instead of VLON hosting. Short answer is no. VLON hosting is essentially identical solutions with the same set of features of VLON. One of the main differences between the two versions is the fact that system updates come more frequently on cloud version, where on server version it's on annual basis. Most people choose the build hosting cloud version because it doesn't require any install and doesn't have any hardware hassle. However, if it's required, you're welcome to use build local for it. Now, let us proceed to setting up the administration panel. Jay, will you help us here? Sure thing. Here we see our Viano local administration panel that we just have installed. As you can see, uh, we start with the systems tab. The first thing that starts is Viano, and you have a button stop and start. This literally means that you can stop and start your Viano local operating system. I would strongly recommend you not to do that unless it's absolutely necessary. The next line tells you about the current version of VLON Local that you're using. We are using the latest version 2004, which was uh, updated by the end of January. Next is the updates. Here you have an option to apply the minor updates that are usually issued within a week or two, uh, every week or two. The next window talks about mailing system. Here you set up an admin, administrator's uh, email. You also select the language, you configure the SMTP server, uh, type in the login and password. This is the administrator's email to push the notifications to other users. Now, the next window talks about limitations. Here, you can virtually uh, select limitations for your Viano local OS. Here, you can limit your number of reports, number of users and sessions per URL and the other uh, details. 
If you would like to know about, about more about this section, I would strongly recommend you to go to our document documentation, or if you have any specific questions, you're more than welcome to email our support team. The next window talks about events module. Here, we would recommend you to activate it and put uh, three, maximum five days. This essentially uh, gives VLON OS a command to register events for the last five days or three days. Uh, five, three to five days is the optimal number that was suggested by our specialist. The next one is the restore of resources and unit properties. We would also recommend you to activate it and put storage term from 14 to 30 days. This is totally up to you. This window is responsible for Vialon storing the uh, units and resources properties. So if you delete, delete unit properties or resource properties by accident, like geofences and etc., Vialon will keep the reserve copy within its memory for the period that you will mention here. So let's go with 30 days. The next one is settings. This window is responsible for uh, setting up your media server if you're planning to provide uh, video telematics for your clientele. You will start with video server URL, which means that you will put your uh, video server's URL here. You put the hardware IP and hardware DNS, so your media server will be communicating with your VLM local to provide video telematics to your clients. Now, the next ones are the options that I would re recommend you to look into. The first one talks about store registration time. What it means is that if you select it, VLON will register the time when it received the media file to, uh, to VLON, apart from the event time that is registered within, within the media file. The next one talks about notifications from VLON to Telegram. As you know, you can push notifications to Telegram group, and this is the way that you can activate it here. Uh, this is one of the like interesting features that I would recommend you to look into or to your system administrator for sure. Database compression. As we know, video and photos, they usually take up a lot of time. So here you have an option of database compression. If you select it, VLAN will auto automatically archive all the media files all older than 14 days. This will save up your resources on the hard drive. This option also gives you an opportunity to drop up uh, to save the more recent uh, media files in your SSD drive and the older button, archive the older files to your hard disk drive as a reserve copy. Now, the backup server. This is a necessity module that we always recommend to our partners who are using the server based option of VLA. This module is responsible for deployment of a backup server somewhere else. Uh, and configuring the DNS port and the key here. So VLON, uh, VLON local OS will be pushing the data online to your reserve uh, backup server. Now, you can download the deployment file here. It says download. If you click it, it will download it to your computer. The next window talks about M MQTT uh, streaming service. This is essentially a module a window that enables you to use the web applications like Fleetran, uh, Fleetran, Hector, and Nimbus, and etc. So you click active, and this window will automatically generate the FLSP token that you can use for your web applications that are available with VLAN. Also, you can use this FLSP token and this module uh, specifically for your custom development. So if you decide to build your own web interface or a web solution on top of VLON, this is the token that you would be using to for, for your solution to communicate with VLON. Let's go to the uh, next step, the status step. We're having some issues. Yes. Now, in the status tab, you have your analytics for your uh, server uh, OS. It starts with the VLON status. It shows you the running time of uh, VLON local OS. And it's been running for 48 hours at this point. 
It shows you the number of units online, the number of uh, users and sessions that are active right now, and the number of messages that you have received in your Yellow Local OS in the last minute. On the right side, you can see the information about the uh, hard, hard drive resources usage by the Yellow database, by the messages, properties, and etc. The next window talks about system info. Here you can see uh, the usage of your RAM, hard drive, CPU, and load average. As you can see here, it shows 41% of your use. It doesn't mean that you are using 41% of your RAM capacity. It means that uh, some of it is occupied by the cache. This is something that can be like automatically configured by VLAN local OS itself, so you do not have to be concerned. All, all you need to be looking at is the darker part of the blue line for the RAM usage. Now, the disk performance shows you the details of your disk's performance. Going further, as you can see, there is a lot of information and uh, analysis of your server OS. And apart from the numbers, you also have an option to monitor the vitals of your uh, server via charts. And you have this option in charts window. As you can see, you can see the number of users, users, the CPU load, processes, and etc. in the form of a chart, which is much more convenient, virtually, uh, visually. Apart from that, you also have an option to select a specific period. For me, it says 24 hours, so within the last day, you can set one week, one month, three months, and older periods. As you can see, it shows the statistics of your, we're looking at CPU right now. Let's go to the next tab called License. In the License tab, you can see the modules that have been configured for your VLAN local license OS. And in our case, we have activated all the modules, and as you can see them as purchased in the uh, status. You can also see the changing models like unit count, the number of extra sites, and other modules like personal design. In case if you need to acquire some additional modules like extra units or personal design, you're more than welcome to do that using my.vlon.com. Um, as well as the other modules like number of red translators and the hardware protocols. So as you can see, we have uh, our own red translators. You can activate the rest using your personal portal with us, which is my.vlon.com. It goes the same for the hardware as well. As you can see, we only have Gurtam hardware like, uh, acquired here for this license. You can activate the others uh, using your personal portal. Let's go to the next one. Now, DMAPs are as, almost as essential as the fleet management system itself for your business. Here, in the map resource, you have uh, options. And by default, it goes with AVD. This is the base tire map that you can download to your server. Uh, server. Now, you can move to Gurtam Maps here by clicking, and it switches to Gurtam Maps layer. That is available to you, and it's available in most of the licenses here. Let's stick with AVD for a moment. As you can see, we have an option to download the base layers of maps to your server OS, and the available uh, maps are here. So let's go with Ogruisk. As you can see, downloaded as, as quick as I'm uh, talking right now, and we can see that installed maps here already. You also have an option of disabling or deleting them from your downloads if you wish. The next one is uploading and compiling the maps. What it means here is that essentially you have an option to upload your custom maps. So if you have specific intel for your specific region, you can upload the maps that are exclusive for your uh, system only. So if you have the right format, you can upload them and download them to your VLAN local OS, and it's available. You're more than welcome to read more about it. As you can see, there's a question mark which you can select and it will uh, take you to docs.vlm.com that talks about this specific window. The next one is keys for server requests. As you can see, we have Google and Yandex. What it means here is that you can uh, pull the geocoding from Google or Yandex if you configure them here. As you can see, you have an option of putting the regular key or the commercial one. And if you configure Google, for example, 
uh, you have an option of uh, taking the geocoding information for your uh, reports, for example. And uh, this means essentially putting the addressing information to your reports and etc. Let's go to the next one. Logstab. Logstab essentially logs uh, most of the things that are happening to your VLON local uh, OS. As you can see, we can see uh, the maps that we just have downloaded and all the other things that have been configured and changed the status is locked here. Most of the information of the changes is available here to you. It shows the VLON errors, the other logs, system logs, and local logs. Now, this part is very important for your system administrator, so he, he can trace back the activities that happen within your VLON local operating system. Uh, the important part to mention here is that, as you can see at the bottom, we have this window that can be uh, opened up. It's called log. And the interesting part of this window is that this is uh, available to you in every single tab of Yellow Local Admin Panel. Here, you can see the logs of the changes that you have applied yeah, as, as a user that logged into the Admin Panel. Let's close it for now. We'll come back to it in a bit later. Now, let us go to VLON section, VLON tab of your VLON local admin panel. This is one of the important parts for upsetting, for example. Let's start with the root user. Now, whenever you deploy VLON local OS, uh, once you configure a web and CMS, you have a root user that has full access to your CMS and VLON hosting that starts as a super user, and you build your hierarchy from them. It's important to mention that the login is always VLON, and here you can configure a custom password for your super user to CMS or VLON web. Now, you also have an option to put an email, which is convenient for you in cases if you forget the password for some reason, or if you want to set up a two-factor authentication for your super user. As you can see, you can enable and disable it here. There is a button here. The next window talk, talks about default billing plan settings. It means that you can put a specific email for your billing plan settings and history period. When you put an email, this will be the email that will be sending the information to the users of the specific billing plans. You can also put a history period by days, and by default at zero, it means that there is no limit in history periods. If you put, for example, 180 days, which is essentially almost six months, it means that the maximum number of history period in days you can set in billings is 180 days, and you can control it from here, and you can limit it whatever you like, depending on your plan to use the resources of hard disk drive. The next one is the modems. Here you can configure SMS. It can be a SMTP or a physical modem that you can configure here and add. Uh, this is an important module for uh, the clients. When you have a client who wants to receive a notification through SMS to his mobile number, and I know that for a fact that there are a lot of clients that wish to have this option for them to be notified via SMS, and here you can configure that using your own SMS provider. Now, the sites. As you know, uh, with VLAN local uh, for rent operating system, you also have options for uh, different web applications, and now the good, good part is that you can set specific DNS for each application of Fleetran, Hectera, Nimbus, and etc. Also, you have an option to have more than one access, DNS access to your VLAN web interface. And you can see we have four DNS that we can configure here. You can also put a custom DNS to your CMS manager. Now let's have a look at one of the DNS, uh, VLAN web DNS. You start, you start with typing in your custom DNS uh, as you wish. If you want, you can put your company name or your own company domain uh, here, and it will be used as your VLON web access, and your clients can be access uh, can access to your VLON system using your own custom DNS. The next tab talks about maps, and this is the layers of maps that you can activate for this specific DNS. It can be Google, Yandex, Beam, or other maps that are available to you. Here, you can put languages that they can choose when they log in. Let's go with Russian and English. These are the most common languages in our office. 
Now, uh, you can add other languages, and these languages will be available when your client will be opening your uh, DNS, and at the bottom, they can select the language that they can use. Uh, now, the advanced section is something of importance, and this is something that you can offset. Yes, no. before we proceed further, Jay, if you don't mind, Sorry. I just want Sorry. to mention to all our viewers that's been uh, about the upselling and the importance of upselling in general. Uh, so, all of the options that we just showing to you now, just keep in mind that you not need to show uh, open them straight away to your customers, and it can be used uh, for upselling purposes to increase your margins when working with the customers. We have actually uh, have created another webinar together with uh, Jay. Uh, where we have discussed and uh, showed some of how to work with upselling and how to upsell right different uh, web applications and different aspects of the own itself. So feel free to um, uh, go via the link in the description to watch that webinar as well. Appreciate it. Now let's go back to the VLM local admin panel. Yeah. <coughs> Here in the advanced tab, you can configure your own information to the DNS. So this is your service now. You can put a custom title of the company name or whatever you like to be named and the copyright text and etc. You can put uh, WebGIS. What it means is that essentially using advanced tab, you can remove all the mention of Yellow or Gurtam from your services and mention your own Intel. You, you can mention your own information and WebJS means that when you have an option to choose several maps instead of Gurtam maps, it will be saying WebJS, for example. DNS locator and links. This is like one of my favorite uh, small, small features that we have on Viala. Essentially, it generates, Viala generates a public link that you can send to people that have a specific access that you configure in Viala. Now, if you click this, it means that Viala will generate a public link using your own domain. This is something of a cool thing that I've discovered recently. Here you can uh, like specify the default map position. Uh, so whenever your clients will be logging in, they will be starting from that specific position. In most cases, it's the city that you're operating in. Excuse me. Apart from that, in the login page, you can configure your own uh, mobile application. It can be iOS, Android, or it can be both. Um, Furthermore, you can go and customize your logo. It can be your logo in the tab. It can be the logo that when you log in, it can be Favicon, it can be a uh, reports logo, for example. Now, at the bottom, we have an option to put an um, SSL protocol. So if you move to, move to HTTPS, this window gives you an option to put an SSL protocol to your specific uh, DNS. This option is available to you to do on your own as well. Now, the interesting part is that uh, you can have several uh, web uh, DNS uh, accesses for your different clients, and you can configure them. As Karina said, using in CMS, you can specify specific DNS to your specific client using the billing plans. Uh, logos and reports. And this is something of a very recent thing that was added in 2004. Uh, we've talked about it before, but I think it's important to mention here as well. Now, if you have a client that wishes to have his own company logo when he generates reports from Yellow, now he can. All you need to do is to uh, create a specific billing plan for that client, and you put a custom logo for his report, so whenever he generates reports from Yellow, he will have his own logo on the, on, the, on the top of reports. This is also a feature that you can upsell as an add-on. Going further, we can see the details of the device types that are configured to uh, your Yellow Local OS. Uh, here you can see the connections. As you can see, we have one connection, uh, one car. You can disconnect the unit if you wish to because you're accessing the admin panel of Yellow Local. You can also see the sessions. This is the users that have logged in using your uh, the DNSs that you have mentioned, and you can disconnect them as well. We have a local admin panel that gives you this full control of your operations, yeah, as well as the sessions that are connected to the system. Now, the trash. Trash uh, is a tab that, uh, sorry, a window that gives you an option to save 
some of the data that have might have been deleted accidentally. So you always have an option to restore the unit messages or the unit information. So for example, if one of your client accidentally removes or one of your colleagues accidentally removes the unit, you have an option to restore it here. And depending on your plans to use the, your storage capacity, you can configure a specific time period. You can put it unlimited so it will be saving all the information here that you have an option to restore later on in case if the deletion happened accidentally. Um, yeah, I think that's about it for the VLAN local admin panel. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jay. So as you can see, the usage of your local thread is not a complicated process and it has its own advantages for the specific projects. We hope this webinar will become an ultimate guide for your operations on your local thread. Now, let us proceed to our Q&A session. Um, and we have Sergey on the line as well. Sergey, can you hear us? Yeah, hello. Hi, everybody. How are you? I'm fine, and you? Good, thank you. OK, so uh, let's see if we have any questions in chat. Uh, I see one question. I'm not sure if he has been answered, so let's have a look. Uh, he, uh, Mr. Tihamir. The Hofsky asks if uh, TSL, the TLS, or SSL for the SMTP. Oh, I already answered it in chat, but uh, for others, uh, of course, TLS is uh, better to use because it's uh, a newer technology. So, uh, and the SMTP server will use uh, the newest one we'll try to use when connecting to SMTP server. And uh, uh, if I can uh, proceed uh, further, there was a question uh, from Albertson uh, about the possibility of installation well on local in cloud-based service like AVS, Azure, or etc. So uh, if you want me to answer, uh, uh, there is such possibility to install well on local on uh, such cloud-based services, uh, but there is no uh, ready solutions uh, like um, uh, containers that uses AWS yet. There is no such containers yet uh, that you can uh, just implement and use it in AWS. However, we test such possibility and maybe in uh, nearest future we will get uh, such containers and so. But for now, uh, if you simply install Debian uh, 9 or 10, it's better De Debian 10 buster version on uh, these platforms, uh, our support uh, department uh, will be able to help you with the manual installation of VLAN local, uh, and uh, it will work. Thank you very much, Sergey. Um, I actually have uh, one question that I wanted to ask you, um, if you could answer us. Um, why the updates of for VLAN local for rent uh, come out on annual basis? Why not more often? Uh, if we can say precisely, we have not only annual updates, but also weekly updates. The annual ones are big ones that we uh, we add new functionality from VLAN hosting for the past year and also new functionality to admin panel. So that's happened annually. Also, we have weekly updates where we have minor fixes to functionality and hardware protocols and so on. Uh, this is important because uh, uh, we are able uh, for this year to test uh, all the functionality from VLAN hosting. Uh, that will get to your well and local without bugs if they can happen. And also we are able to test all new functionality on the admin panel. So it's happened annually. But we, in the result, get the uh, stable product. Thank you very much, Sergey. Um, Karina, we Often, uh, like every now and then, we receive this question. I would appreciate if you could share your thoughts on this. Like, uh, can uh, our partners use both cloud-based 
and several B solutions at the same time. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, this is not an issue for our partners. Uh, as we said previously in the beginning, the cloud version is more popular, but if you require uh, to have an additional server-based license, uh, you can definitely use both. Um, I mean, uh, contractually, we're just going to have separate agreements for both versions. However, it's absolutely fine to have both accounts um, here as well. So definitely not an issue. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, let's see for another couple of seconds if we have any other questions. No. Um, yeah, I think we're good. Cool. Um, anyway, if you will have any any more questions about this topic or if you need any further information, please don't hesitate to contact us. We will be glad to assist you. Um, thank you so much for uh, joining our session today. It was a um, pleasure to be and uh, see Sergey as well uh, on the other line or in Belarus. Um, please also don't forget to join us again on 18th of February at uh, 5 p.m. Uh, time for a webinar which will be dedicated to a free methods of data processing with VLON. Uh, webinar will be hosted by our colleagues, uh, Alex Rakowski, VLON trainers team lead. Uh, and Maria Pankovska, uh, business analyst in Uh Thank you so much and have a lovely evening. Bye, guys. Bye bye.